So this last month I was back in San Diego visiting some old military buddies and I went to Marine Corps Recruiting Depot to watch a graduation and I can tell you it was motivating to watch those devil dogs on that graduation day go out there and put on a show. And it got me thinking, I wrote down, you know, I need to create another video talking about the style and the life tips that I took from the Marine Corps and I think any man has taken from the military that you can use to become a better you. You ready guys? Let's do it. So the first lesson I want to share with you is take the time to master the basics. So we're there at that graduation. I mentioned that it's 10 weeks long Marine Corps boot camp, and my wife's like, oh, that's not too long to learn everything you need to know. And I'm laughing because of, of course you don't learn everything you need to know. They basically learn how to make their beds, how to have the lingo that you need to be a United States Marine. But when you start off as a private, you know, basically nothing. And then you're going to go to your first, you know, station that they're going to train you up a bit more. But again, this is all basic training, a little bit more advanced training, but it's when you show up to your first duty station and you talk and you work with people that are more experienced with you. They're going to show you how really things operate. This is where you learn and this applies to everything in life. So many people go to college. So many people start to dress better and they think, oh, I've learned everything I need to learn. That is not the case. Life is continuous education. And if you're not doing that, you are going to fall behind. You are not going to be successful. You're not going to be able to achieve your dreams. So when it applies to style, when you start getting dressing better, guess what? Okay. You're better than 95% of guys out there. That's pretty easy, but can you go up to the next level? And then can you start to teach others? Because that's what you learn is that it's about passing on that knowledge. And again, guys, don't think that college, don't think that your advanced degree makes you better or makes you smarter than others. No, it's that continued education. It's every day trying to be a bit better than you were the day before. Tip number two, work hard and be proud of who you are right now. So the coolest part is during the graduation, uh, the commanding officer asks, all the privates a question and they sound off and it scares people in the audience. And I love it because these guys, these young men are so proud and yet they're the lowest rank in the United States Marine Corps, but it doesn't matter. They are now Marines. And I know so many of you guys are struggling or working hard. You just started to dress better. You just maybe found my videos. You are, you know, starting off in life. You have maybe only a few months experience. You feel like you know nothing, but here's the deal is that we all start there. Every commanding general started off as a lieutenant. Every sergeant major of the Marine Corps started off as a private. And that is the amazing thing is the potential. And so when you're getting started, understand, yes, you'd like to have more experience, be able to be able to know how to do everything, but understand those guys that are 20, 30 years ahead of you, they would give anything to be in your shoes, to be able to start again and to have the whole world in front of them. Next up, let's look at the importance of a team of not being one dimensional. So if you go to a Marine Corps graduation, what you're going to see is that the Navy is there in force because guess what? The Navy, they take care of all the meta. I mean, they're the corpsmen, they're the chaplains. They give us rides around the world and anyone that's going to be anything in life, whether you want to be the best dressed guy, whether you want to be the most successful man, you're not going to do it by yourself. You have to surround yourself with other people that are going to lift you up. If you want to level up your style, there's only so much you can pick up up watching my videos, reading books. You need to actually surround yourself with people that can give you feedback, clothiers that can help build the clothing, guys that know shoes, to be able to well round out yourself. Go off, find these forums where guys talk about watches, where they talk about fragrances. That's why I have no problem recommending guys like Jeremy Fragrance, recommending people who many people view as my competitors like Aaron Marino, Jose Zuniga, uh, Raphael over the Gentleman's Gazette. There are so many, so many other great guys, guys that I could reference you guys to. I think you get the point. It is about surrounding yourself with other men and women that can lift you up to the next level. The next lesson I want to share with you is the right clothing can make you look amazing. Now for these young Marines, they're wearing these uniforms that fit their bodies in the best shape of their lives. They just look amazing and understand that you've got a uniform as well. I don't know what it is for your particular industry and the message you want to send, but I know for a lot of guys, a suit, is their suit of armor. This is something that you can wear a jacket 
and a pair of trousers made from the same fabric, it will make you look taller, make you look leaner, make you look more trustworthy, more attractive. All these are great things that you want to do, especially if you're in sales, if you're a consultant, if you're looking to start your company, going to a bank, looking to get a loan. But let's say that's not you. Well, guess what? Put on a leather jacket, a suede jacket. Put on something that's going to build up your shoulders, something that's going to slim you up, something maybe wear a monochromatic outfit, a dark jacket, a dark shirt with dark trousers. Again, what I love about menswear is there are so many things that you can wear and put on your body to hide all the imperfections most of us have, but understand what your body type is. Understand what clothing is going to make you look like a million bucks and love everything you wear. Gents, the clothing you wear affects your confidence. It affects how other people perceive you and how you perceive yourself. Wear the right clothing for the right situation and you're more likely to succeed. Next up, let's talk about how the details matter. When you look at a man in uniform, you will notice everything is in its place and every detail has been paid attention to. So, they call it the fruit salad. It's basically all the medals and ribbons a Marine or a Navy officer wears on his chest. Point is, is they are in a specific order and every medal there has a meaning. In fact, if you're wearing a medal, which you did not earn, guess what? You're going to get kicked out of the military. You're going to get court-martialed. You could go to jail for that. That small detail is that important. And this is something when it comes down to everything a man does. This applies to your clothing. This applies to your work. When people look at a Marine, they can tell a guy squared away in the Marine Corps by the way his uniform is pressed by the way that he carries himself, the way it fits. And a lot of people say, well, how does this apply to the work he does? Well, it does apply because I can tell if he pays attention to his uniform, most likely his rifle is not going to have rust in it because he will have cleaned his rifle as well. In fact, he would do that before he took care of his uniform. The same applies at work and the way you dress. If you are very sloppy, you don't care about your appearance, I get it. You may say that's not really important, but if you don't make your bed, I can assume that you don't clean your dishes. And if you don't clean your dishes, I can assume that you don't really clean your bathroom and I'm not going to want to be your roommate. The same thing applies in business. If you do not look the part, I don't want to be your business partner because I'm assuming on a lot of other things, you're not going to do what needs to be done, what I consider to be the bare minimum. And this is the hidden message with the way we dress. It sends the signal of how we do or do not pay attention to the details. Next up, I want to talk about practicing perfection and the importance of practicing everything you do. So, if you want to dress sharp, you don't just wake up one day and start to dress better. If you want to start wearing a hat, and I think every man would look great in a hat. The point is, you don't just wear it one day because you're not going to have the confidence if you've never worn a hat. You practice wearing that hat. You wear it around the house where no one notices, where you just kind of get a feeling for it and then all of a sudden you start building up the confidence and you start to feel better about it. Then you start to actually not even notice it and it becomes a second skin. It becomes something you love and this is about dressing sharp. So many guys get started and then they abandon it because they try to do too much too quickly. No, practice perfection. Practice taking a step in the right direction. Maybe you're starting to wear that nicer jacket that you know you're going to get compliments on. Wear that fragrance that, yeah, you know is something that, you know, you're not used to wearing a fragrance. Your wife may say something. She may not even like it, but you love the fragrance yourself, so you wear it at the office. The point is, practice perfection. Don't just practice because if you practice, practice makes permanent. You want to practice perfecting yourself, becoming the best man you can be. The next point is I want you to understand there is always a dress code. So, at this graduation, all the Marines are in their Charlies. There's a few Marines here or there that are in different uniforms. Maybe they came from off the base, but in general, there was a protocol. Understand at work. They may say there's no dress code, but there is. There is a culture. There is a way that people and they have in their mind an idea of what a success is. And you want to be thinking for whatever profession you have, for whatever you do, what is that vision of success and dress to it. Now, you don't want to go overboard here. If you are a sacker at a grocery store and you want to run the entire grocery stores throughout the United States, you don't probably want to start wearing a suit, but you can dress nice. You can wear clothing that fits you. Maybe you'll even bring in a bow tie. You'll be a little bit 
eccentric, but guess what? You know that you want to dress well. You wear the bow tie because it stays out of the way. It just makes you look friendlier and people remember you and you become known as that guy that's going around sacking groceries that is just so friendly and is on his way to bigger and greater things. That's a good reputation, especially when you're 16, 17, 18 years old, just getting started. The point is understand that people make judgments and that there is always a dress code. There's always a uniform that needs to be worn to be able to send the signal you want to send. Now let's talk about rank. And in the military, this is really clear. We're very upfront about the way the system works. You've got officer, you've got enlisted, and within each of these categories, you've got variations of them. In general, anyone on the enlisted side will first salute an officer, not because they're better. It's simply the protocol. It is the courtesy that is extended to the rank. On the officer side, you've got second lieutenant, first lieutenant, captain, major. So a second lieutenant will then, you know, he's going to salute pretty much any of the other officers above him. And you're always saluting the person that has the higher rank. Now understand, in the civilian world, those ranks do exist, but they're not as upfront about it. There is this, and I talked about this earlier, there's an idea of what a success is. And when a man dresses to a higher rank, he is initially afforded the respect that goes with that higher rank. So if you look the part of a general, if you look the part of a lieutenant colonel, guess what? You're going to be treated with respect. Now, in the military, and it's the same in the civilian world, if you look the part, but then you betray those expectations because you're a bad leader, because you know what, you're actually an idiot, guess what? People are going to talk behind your back. They're going to maybe stop, you know, saluting you as much. They're going to find ways to kind of undermine you. But the thing is, is I want you, why would you shoot yourself in the foot and not look the part? Quick story. I remember I was sick on Naval Air Station, Corpus Christi, and I went to the doctor. I, I had put on my uniform. I was in a hurry, and I was kind of surprised. These guys walked by me, and they did, they just looked at me. They didn't even give me a salute. They actually looked at me kind of aggressively, and I didn't think anything of it. Walking through, um, I then I did not get saluted again right in front of the hospital. And I'm like, what is going on? But again, I'm sick, not feeling well, and I'm sitting there, and I take off my blouse, and I look. I don't have any rank. I forgot to put my first lieutenant bars on. And of course, nobody knew who I was and they thought I was a private. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't pass an officer who'd start yelling at me. That would have been funny. Uh, probably made a better story. Point is, is that these ranks do exist. People do make judgment calls based off how you dress. So you might as well look the part of the higher ranking officer, the higher ranking enlisted man, so that you're treated with respect initially. Now, this next point was really hammered home when I met up with my buddies who I hadn't seen for 15 years and I was surprised what they remembered about me. Now, when you're trying to make some things happen, especially in the Marine Corps, it's all about mission accomplishment. It's about going out there and getting the job done. And oftentimes in work, in school, we fall into this and we don't treat people with respect because we're just trying to get done what needs to get done. We're being a man. But guys, when I talked with these guys about what they remembered about me, it was that it was my character. It was the stories they had about how I took care of my Marines, how I was a great person to work with, how I always, you know, I wasn't the smartest Marine. I wasn't, I definitely was not the most efficient or effective adjutant. I came in a bit soured initially because I'd been a fallen angel. I was basically in a training accident. I had to get out of flying jets and I just, I, that was my dream to fly jets. And all of a sudden I'm in the infantry, I'm an adjutant within the infantry, but I tried to make the best of it. And I had a great executive officer, uh, major, you know, actually at the time he was a major now he got out as a Colonel Lee um, you know I talked to Lieutenant Thomas he was our doc when we deployed over you know to Iraq and Kuwait and did all you know I'm talking with these guys and they're like you know I remember this about you you were a good person you always were there you always try to make things happen I could count on you understand gentlemen your character and the shadow of that character your reputation that is what you always want to be thinking about. Yes, it's important to get the job done. Yes, it's important to meet the numbers and to make things, but never sacrifice the human beings, the people, and treat them with respect. It's funny, and it's almost sad, the people that we talked about that we didn't have the highest opinion of, that we never stayed in touch with, that we, you know, it's like, well, because honestly, they were assholes and they were a bit toxic. And yes, they maybe had some great performance reviews and being able to accomplish mission, but their Marines under them had no respect for them because they actually, I mean, they wanted to frag them. I mean, well, they not maybe not that bad, but I think you guys get the point. You want to be 
a servant leader. You want to be that leader. You want to be that lion that's willing to die for the pride. And the pride is therefore willing to follow you into anything. And if you can be that kind of leader who leads by example, who puts others before him, and you apply this to everything you do, guys, you're going to be in great shape. Now, I know I could have covered a lot more points, but guys, I've got this video right here, 10 tips I learned from the Marine Corps when it comes to style. I think I talked about style hacks that I picked up in the Marine Corps. Go check out this video, guys. I go into a lot more detail.